Hey guys, welcome to art class. It's your last art class of the year. I bet you're looking forward to being done with school and having a fun time all summer long. Hopefully you can find some activities to do with your family or swim or hike or bike ride, whatever. So um, I am hoping that you like our last project of the year. We're going to do some painting with tissue paper, actually. Not with it, but on tissue paper. So for today you're going to need a paintbrush. I'm going to use this kind of old beat up brush for my glue. So you'll need a paintbrush and white glue or if you have Mod Podge, Mod Podge would be great. Um, you'll need a piece of drawing paper or construction paper and if all you have is printer paper that's fine. A piece of paper, 8.5 by 11 would be great. And then if you have any um, tissue paper, even the kind that when you go buy a uh, clothing at the store and they maybe wrap it in tissue paper. That is perfect. So if you have plain white, great. I don't have any white so I have this, it looks like white, but it's actually a really pale pink. So if you have any of that gift wrap tissue paper, um, a pale color like yellow, pink, or blue, something really light would work out great. So those are the things that you'll need plus your watercolor paints. If you don't have paints, we can try it with markers. And um, why don't you gather those things and I'll meet you back here in a minute and we'll get started. Okay, here we go. The first step is to put your paper in the vertical position. We're gonna do a standing up rooster painting today. So um, you can imagine the rooster's head will be right about here, his body is kinda of down here, and the tail is gonna come up and fill in this area here. So this is the area where we're gonna concentrate on for what we're doing with the tissue paper. And what I mean is, if you don't have a big enough sheet of tissue paper to cover the whole page, that's fine. We really only are thinking about where the rooster body is. That's the part that we mostly want to cover. So, go ahead and get your paper, and like I said, mine is pink. I like to start by crumpling it, give it a nice wrinkle, and then un unfold it. And I want you to think about the shape of the rooster. Um, I'm going to ask you to cut, I'm, t I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to tear pieces. So the tail of the rooster, as you know, kind of comes up and over and it curves down sort of like that. So maybe if you have some pieces sort of shaped like this, or even if they're skinnier, like this, kind of like individual tail feathers. So I'd like you to tear up a few of those and the body of the rooster. We're just looking for a basic size, so let me see here. I'm just gonna play with these for a little bit before I do anything just to get an idea. Boy, they're sticking together today. Okay, maybe something like that. Then the neck might be sort of about this big, and maybe there's that comb, the, the rooster comb on the top, maybe sort of about that big. Okay, don't worry about the legs. Okay, so this is kind of the basic size I want you to think about. Um, and what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of the glue on my brush and just put some on the paper and then put your, put your uh, tissue paper on top of it and give it a little wrinkle. Right now it's just sort of tacked in place. I didn't really completely glue the whole um, piece. I'm just trying to tack these in position. See, maybe this will go like this or something. And as I'm tacking them down, I'm wrinkling them up a little bit. And here's maybe where the comb will be, wrinkling it. Okay, and then um, you're gonna do the same thing with each tail feather, but let me show you one of them first. So I'll just put some glue up kind of like that, and then I'm gonna stick this tail feather on and give it, give it a turn. It's okay if some of it goes off the edge of the page because you don't need your rooster to feel like he's squished in place and can only be right there. So I want you to do a whole bunch of rooster tail pieces back there and then maybe some more layers on the body because we want a good wrinkle on that rooster. So I'm going to speed this up and you can watch while I do it and then start your own.
Okay, so we have kind of a basic rooster shape, and that is all I need from you on this. So now what I want is use your brush or your fingers or whatever you need to do to, I want you to paint over the whole entire rooster. And while you're painting with a brush, you can kind of manipulate the, the pieces to get them into a position. If you need them to move a little bit, you can kind of use your brush to push them around. But I want you to try and get a good contact with the paper. So you may have to stick your brush underneath like that a little bit here and there. And let your um, glue cover even the rest of the white parts of the paper. Because you're going to be painting with watercolors on top of this whole thing. And um, sometimes, depending on what paper you have, your paper might not be so great for watercolors. And what I mean is, if you just have something like a printer paper, sometimes painting on that with watercolors feels like painting on a Kleenex or a paper towel. The paint just sinks right in and you don't have a chance to move it around with your brush and it's just frustrating. So if you, once you get your rooster stuck down, if you tape paint glue over the rest of this, then it will seal the paper in a way that makes your paint glide over it nicely and your watercolors can do really interesting things. So that's your job is cover the whole rooster and all the paper with glue and then maybe set it outside to dry for a while. And then when you come back to it later, when it's dry, you can turn the video back on and we'll get going on the rest of it. We're just going to do a tiny bit of drawing on this and then we're going to start with the painting. Um, if you have extra paper left over, feel free to maybe add a few more pieces here and there. Uh, bring out your rooster maybe a little bit. Maybe his rooster comb I need a little bit more or something. Um, you can add a couple more pieces on the body. Just It just gives it a nice texture. And... Um, and then just make sure to seal those in with a layer of glue over the top. Okay, so that's your job. And I'll see you back here in a little while when these are all dry. Okay, we are back. My paper is nice and dry. All the glue is dried through and through. I do have some pieces hanging off over the edge, which I don't mind. I think I kind of actually like that. So what you're going to need now is you will need your pencil and you're going to need some watercolor paint so I have mine over here to the side. You'll need a brush and some water and even a rag or um, some type of paper towels or something to blot your brush on. Okay so what you want to do is um, with your pencil I'm going to ask you to work with a pencil and it is okay to have the pencil marks show. In fact I think that will really add to the interest of this painting or uh, so I'm going to ask you to be able to be okay with being kind of messy with your marks and don't worry about it if they show. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of do an outline here and I'm going real quick and messy and I apologize if you can't see I'm going to try and make that line a little darker. Um, we need, to, I, I don't know how to get it so where you could see better because sometimes if I have it too bright, it gets to be a little too um, too much of a, a glare for you. So, okay, so here I have come around the top head. This is his little under his neck. You know how they have that kind of waddle. I don't know what they call it, but that kind of section that of weird red skin. So that's going to come around there. And then I want to make sure I give him his beautiful rooster comb. So I'm kind of inventing a shape up there. All right, and then we come down the back. He's very proud, so he has his chest puffed out there. So we come around the back, and then we have this beautiful tail. So notice the way I am making the marks. Very quick, just, whoops, sorry, I moved my whole paper. Very quick, and um, sometimes my pencil gets kind of hung up on the bumps in this paper. That's why my paper keeps shifting but I'm just doing very simple lines, just like a, a feathers, okay? Then the back side of his body is gonna come down under here, and I'm being messy, and I'm doing going over my lines multiple times on purpose because I want to 
uh, be messy for this one. And then we need a couple of legs, so we're going to give them a big rooster leg like this. And they have those claws. And they do have, like, back here kind of a, can you see that? Kind of a big claw back there. So here comes a toe here. And let's do another one. And then they have that kind of back toe like this. Okay, so that's one leg. And how am I going to put the other leg? Let's see. We'll have the other leg kind of over here. And I should have done this one first because this one actually is going to overlap that front guy. But we'll take care of that with the paint. Here comes that big claw. Maybe some of you actually own roosters as pets and so you know what their feet look like. But I'm just being kind of loose with what I want to have happen there. Okay, and he's not just floating so we're going to put some ground back here behind him of what he's standing on. Last thing I want to do is place an eye somewhere in here. Um, I'm going to give him a little bit of a fierce look. So can you see how my eye is angled down like that? I just want him to be like fierce, like don't mess with me. All right. Now, the next step is the paint. And roosters can have so many very fun and interesting colors. So I'm going to start out with doing some beautiful, like um, maybe a yellow kind of a yellow gold color. You can put reds, you can sometimes have purples or blues in there. Sometimes the colors of the feathers seem a little iridescent. Sorry, I'm just, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just pre-wetting. Should have done a little bit more of this, but I'm just getting some, some of my paints really wet a little bit so that they can be nice and ready to go. Okay, and I think I like this red right over here. Okay, now let's start out with the, the neck back here. I'm going to grab some of this beautiful gold and um, the whole part of this is nothing more than just doing kind of this movement. You're, you're almost just like creating individual feathers, okay? And it's messy on purpose because what that paper that we've laid down is going to make all these colors sort of blend and bleed together. So I am doing these little messy strokes, but eventually they're probably going to be even more blended together because of the tissue paper that we put on. So I'm just going to start in with the neck. Then let's say I want to get into a little bit more orange. So I'm going to put a little orange in some places here. Maybe it comes down around like this. And because of the style of this, where it's wrinkly and we did all those marks with the, um, the pencil, we are not looking for precision. It's supposed to be messy, so this is your chance. I know some people get frustrated with watercolor because it doesn't always do what you want it to do, but here's your chance to go crazy and have some fun with it. Okay, now... I do want to move the body into some darker blue colors. I have to be careful right here because there's an orange there and if the blue and orange mix in with each other we're going to get an ugly kind of a gray color. So I am going to put the blue near it but not let the two of those guys touch just yet. Later on, maybe if I come back with another pass of paint after this round dries, then maybe I can let those touch a little bit more. But for now, while they're wet, you got to keep them separate. Go a little bit down on the legs, comes back up underneath here, and how about some turquoise in there too? Okay, now we're getting back up into the wing section. The wing can really be kind of a free-for-all. You can have all kinds of colors happening in there. So how about I throw a little red in, and because red and orange mix up just fine, I don't mind if those touch. And I also don't mind if the red touches the purple, so red is kind of a good bridge color to go in between because we don't care what happens when the turquoise and the red mix. In fact, back here it's making an interesting deeper, darker red. Okay, I may even put a little bit down in here. Okay, main part of the body is all done there, and now we need to go up into the feathers. Um, that is where a lot of times we have the most beautiful and vibrant colors. And I think I want some reds up in here. So just like I did with the pencil, 
I'm mimicking that, that movement with my brush and I'm just pulling feathers from the base on up and letting them curve, go off the page, end abruptly, whatever. And so now let's get some orange again. And it's okay if some of that paper shows through or your pencil marks show through or it's okay if we have um, some whites of the paper showing. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Okay, let's see. What else? What do I want next? We don't really have any green in here. Do we want any green? Hmm? No, I don't think I'm in the mood. I'm going to pick another purpley red color that I haven't used yet. Oh, yeah. Remember how these pieces hung off the edge? I'm leaving them. I like it like that. Okay. We have room for a little hit of light up here, so I can come in and put a few yellows up here. Not too many. Okay, look at that, we're almost done with the whole rooster. Okay, now, how about that comb on top of his head? We need to have that be a nice, deep red. So, I'm really getting a lot of paint on the brush and trying to not have it be as wet because I would like to have this be a little more precise. I would zoom in for you, because, but something is up with my camera and it's not zooming right now. So I'm just being really careful with the point of the brush. And the head is still wet, so I need to be careful there because maybe I don't want that perp or that red going down into the rest of his head and face. Same thing under here, we have this piece of waddly skin and there's a little bit above the nose, okay? All right, I have red on the brush. Is there anywhere else I want it? Sure, how about right here? Okay. For now, I'm gonna be okay with that. So let's go on down to the legs. Now, chicken legs, rooster legs, are usually kind of a sort of a weird skin color. There might be a little bit of a, of a yellow to it. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of yellow down and then I'm gonna take a little bit of this red on my brush and kind of go right over the top of that yellow and let it mix itself. Let's see, we had one here, one here. Get those little um, spikes back there. All right, I like that. One last thing, we need the ground. Now we have an awful lot of color in the rooster. So how about if we don't worry too much about what color the ground is. I kind of have just sort of this purpley gray and this is something that if you haven't started this yet you could even have done this first. Right now I have to be careful working around all that wet paint but it is what it is. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, if you want, you can have background, you can have a blue sky or whatever behind it, but I think it looks kind of neat like that. And now as I look at it, because you always want to take a final look, step back and look from at your paintings, I feel like I'd like to have some of this dark from down here coming up in here. So I have a little turquoise on my brush, and I'm just going to put a couple bits right in there. It sort of ties it together with what's happening here, and it carries on up there, maybe, maybe a couple come up in there. Not too much. Just do a few and then wait and see how it looks. All this stuff right here with his beak and his eye and everything, I suggest that you wait till this is dry and you use maybe some color pencils or if you have fine point sharpies in color. I would do that stuff that way because with all the wrinkles on there and if you try to get an eye on that wrinkly paper, I think that you will feel a little bit frustrated trying to really get that to work because it's going to bleed all over the place. Look at here, how about a little green? Sorry, I meant to leave it alone, but I just thought, oh, I don't have any green yet. Let me put a little green. Okay, all done. You have now painted a rooster using tissue paper. So that's it for our very last art project of the year. I wish you the best of luck this summer. I hope you have a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you all again next year at school. Take care. Thumbs up. Have a great day.